and welcome to another episode of Little Bird's Bakery. I'm Little Bird. Today I'm going to show you how to make a basic white bread. This recipe is my favorite for white bread and my family loves it too. It's really easy and all the ingredients you should have in your house already. So, throw your towel across your shoulder and let's get started. Here's what you'll need. You'll need yeast, water, sugar, salt, oil, and flour. Start with one cup of warm water. Then add one package of dry yeast or two and one quarter teaspoons. Then add one teaspoon of sugar. With a wooden spoon, mix your ingredients together until you get something that looks like this. Now with your handy dandy dish towel, Cover up your yeast mixture for about 5 minutes or until it becomes bubbly. After about 5 minutes, your yeast will look something like this. Beautiful! Get a large mixing bowl. Pour in your bubbly yeast. One and a half tablespoons of sugar. One teaspoon salt. And two tablespoons oil. Bring back that wooden spoon and stir until all is combined. In this bowl, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. Start by adding just one cup of your flour and mix it all together until it's well incorporated and it looks like this. Keep adding flour a half cup at a time until you form a soft dough. After about two to two and a half cups, you will have formed a soft dough that does not stick to the walls of your bowl, like this. As you can see, I have plenty of flour left, and the rest of this will be added while we knead our dough. So let's start by making our lightly floured surface. Roll out that soft, sticky dough onto your surface and prepare to get messy. It's always a good idea to flour your hands first before you start kneading. Knead your dough using a push-turn-fold technique for 8 minutes. It's looking good. We're almost done. And the final product is a firm, smooth, and elastic dough like this. Now comes the rising portion of this process. I like to use a glass bowl lightly sprayed with a cooking spray. And just grab your dough and pop it in. And then take your handy dandy dish towel, it's a good thing we have this thing, and just put it over your bowl so that we avoid drafts and we keep the dough as warm as possible. Here's a fun trick to ensure that your dough will rise properly. If you have a toaster oven like I do, set it to your lowest setting and turn it on. And keep it on for about three to five minutes. And while it's heating, put your dough on top of it. This will keep your dough nice and warm and ensure a nice rise. But be careful for these loose parts of towel. We don't want any fires. So simply fold the edges up onto the bowl. But don't let any cracks in the bowl. We don't want any drafts getting into our dough. After about five minutes, just turn your toaster oven off and keep your dough on top of the toaster oven. While the toaster oven cools down, it'll stay nice and warm up here. Make your lightly floured surface once again and roll out your risen dough right onto it. And now all we have to do is just punch it down and then let it rest for 10 minutes. Okay, so here's our rested dough. Now we're going to do something that you may not have expected. Get a rolling pin and with your flour that you have left, we're going to flour the rolling pin because we're going to roll this dough out into a big rectangle. Start rolling out your dough until you have a rectangle that's about 14 by 7 inches. Starting with the shorter side, we're just going to start tightly rolling it up like a log. Make sure the whole thing is an even thickness throughout the log and just pinch the ends. And then we're going to take each end and just 
kind of fold it under to make a kind of a, a loaf looking thing there. We're gonna take our cooking spray again and then a 9 by 5 by 3 loaf pan and just lightly grease it. We're gonna take our loaf and plop it on in but we want to make sure it still looks like a loaf. Here comes our handy dandy dish towel again. We're gonna cover it up and let it rise for one more hour. I'm gonna use my toaster oven trick again but if you don't have one, just make sure it's in a warm place without a draft. Our bread's almost done rising, so let's preheat our oven to 375 degrees. This has risen perfectly. Finally, into the oven now for about 40 minutes. Okay, I have 35 minutes left on my timer, so let's check in on our bread. Ooh, looks good. As you can see, I still have plenty of time left on my timer, but my bread is already starting to turn a beautiful golden brown color. So now I'm going to start checking it about every 5-7 minutes or so to make sure that my bread isn't burning. I don't want to overcook it. Alright, this thing is done. Ooh, it looks so good! I'm just going to use some towels here to take it on out and look at how beautiful get a cooling rack and carefully turn out your bread now this is a beautiful piece of bread right here it has a nice smooth dome shape at the top and it's a nice golden beautiful golden brown color all the way around as you can see now if I were to cut into this bread right now we would get just this beautiful fluffy white steamy goodness but I'm not gonna do that right now because it's still too hot and believe it or not it's still cooking inside it's still very very hot on the inside and we want to let it cook all the way through and cool completely until we cut it well that's it for today I hope you had as much fun baking this bread as I did but the best part is eating it. <laughs> this bread is perfect for making sandwiches, for making croutons, french toast, bread pudding, you name it. It's white, it's fluffy, it's dense, and it has a wonderfully rich flavor. For this and more recipes, you can visit my blog at little-birdsbakery.blogspot.com or click on the link below. Thanks for watching! I'm gonna eat some bread.